rolling sound part. Here we go. One point six seven. And starting right around. Welcome to Marketing Your Film During a Pandemic. On today's panel, we have Tracy Rector, China Robinson, and Holland Sanders. Ladies, could each of you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background? Sure, I'm Tracy Rector. I'm the executive producer of No Ordinary Love. And a couple of years ago, I had the crazy idea of creating this film. So I reached out to China Robinson and the rest is history. Um, hello, my name is China Robinson. I'm a writer, director, and producer. Um, I wrote and directed for stage for 10 years before hopping over into film, and I've been in film since 2017. And I'm Holland Sanders. I am the CEO and founder of Hong Collective, which is a PR company, and uh, Tracy and China invited me to come in and help support the project as they were going on their big festival kind of launch. So thank you all so much for being here today. Um, China, I'd love to start with you. I know. Um, Lola Lisa is premiering at the film festival, an amazing short. So can you tell us a little bit about your film and the inspiration behind it? Sure, um, well, Lola Lisa is a thriller. It's a short film and it's just something that I decided to put together. I wanted to kind of try a few other genres. I've been doing drama for a while and I wanted to try comedy and thriller and horror and everything else so that I'm just not um, in a box. So L Lola Lisa was my step into Thriller. I loved it. It certainly had me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, good. And also, No Ordinary Love, um, is such an important subject ma matter to s shed light upon. Um, but I'm sure it's, it's been a challenge uh, to go through the film circuit in 2020 in the middle of a global pandemic. So can each of you share your experience on how you've navigated that? Oh goodness, it's been, <laughs> it's been quite a ride. We thought we had a plan all worked out and then the pandemic happened, which I'm sure people have said over and over again in various, for various reasons. But for the film industry, basically the festivals all went virtual. So we had our first one in June in France and it was all online and that's where it started from there and the rest of them followed suit, which presents some challenges. They all did a great job with what they had to work with at the, kind of at the last minute. But one of the downsides of it is, is we're not able to meet with distributors and sales agents and some of the movers and shakers within the film industry, which are the connections that we need going forward for after the film festival circuit. We help to get picked up for distribution or streaming contract, and we don't have those connections, that face-to-face -face contact with them. So that's been a real challenge. And the film industry is pretty much shut down in a lot of ways. As we all know, the theaters right. are closed, and it just is really presents a lot of challenges. And if you wanted to start another project right now, it's 25 to 30% increase in your budget to to be able to follow all the protocols for COVID. I'm sure. So it's quite a challenge, but, but we're, we're managing so yeah. far and that's why we uh, stepped in to help have Holland come in and help us and trying to get some momentum behind the film and some um, public exposure. So we're excited about what's next. Yeah, I think um, for me, I had um, the opportunity to travel and, and move around quite a bit with my first short, which was Greenwood. Um, so I, I met filmmakers, I met cinematographers, we met, you know, uh, you know, everybody in the crew and, and all of that. And that's where you do a lot of your networking that way also. Yeah. So that's something that's been new and festivals have really stepped to the plate and figured out how to allow us to still network um, with each other, like okay. filmmaker to filmmaker. So that's been nice. Um, and like Tracy said, we had a really strong start with No Ordinary Love in the fall of 2019. And some festivals went online, some it pushed back their, their dates. Like we have a few festivals that were happening supposedly now, and they're now happening in the spring of 2021. <laughs> so, and some canceled. We know like Tribeca canceled. And so different festivals are handling it the best way they can. And I think they're really doing a great job. Like Absolutely. we've had some really good experiences. Mm -hmm. I am a little on the flip side because although it's really been a challenge and I think a complication to not be in person, in the PR world and in the publicity world, it has given us a lot of opportunity to fill in the gaps because the larger films have slowed down, because there isn't a lot of new projects coming to market, mm -hmm. it has given a lot of opportunity for a lot of these journalists and writers who care so much about the industry to talk about 
the up-and-coming filmmakers, people like China who have a very unique voice and who are really positioning not just the theme of their film, but who they are as a person in this industry. And so for me, I see my partners in this project, you know, really struggling and, you know, and having some frustration with not being able to make those contacts. But on the flip side, we've gotten this uh, kind of a rare gift because instead of box office releases weekend after weekend that are, you know, the big Hollywood names, we're able to slide in um, a lot of new opportunities because the bigger projects have slowed down and they had the forethought of bringing me in right at the right time to kind of maximize on that opportunity. And so I think it's really interesting because from a publicity standpoint, it has been kind of a rare gift because people are really wanting to help. They see the struggling projects, they see the opportunity and they need content. And so we've been able to produce a lot of really cool content because they were prepared and we started early in the game. There's really not as great. much new noise exactly. in the film yes. industry. Yes. So that's where we have a place for our voice to fit in, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is yeah. awesome. And it's been so well received. I've been loving seeing all the great coverage on the film well, and on you all. <laughs> it's the Holland Collective, yes. <laughs> we oh, have. What are but some but tips you could share for sure. other filmmakers looking to get exposure on their projects? Absolutely. So one thing is when Tracy and China came to me, they'd already been in the market going to some festivals and they, do, they had done a lot of the foundational work. They had put together a, an electronic press kit, they had the photos, they had a trailer, they had their ID, IMDB stuff, everything was set up. And so I was able to jump in and really get moving. But for people who maybe don't have the budget or don't have the opportunity right now to bring someone like me in, I would say the biggest thing that we've done that has, I think, moved the needle in the most impactful way is kind of a two-part. One is we found the really unique elements of the film that were very personal but had a very global resonance. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, this film is dealing with, you know, issues that one in four women face every day, which is domestic violence. Goodness. And it is made by a young black female filmmaker. And right now there is a lot of people championing, you know, women, women of color, especially in this industry, mm -hmm. and stories told through that lens about something that is historically told by men. And so we really made it about this very singular thing that only No Ordinary Love had. And then we did our research. We did our due diligence. We found writers who talk about not just great films launching, but films that have important messaging, yes. films that go beyond the screen into really impacting what we consider great art, changing people's perspective. And so we were looking for writers who did that. So I think step one is figuring out what makes you special and really different in this world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not trying to compete in the same box as everyone else, but building your own and then finding the people who celebrate those differences in the journalistic, you know, kind of media realm who want to talk about what you have to offer. And so I think that's what we did. And we all got on yeah. the same page very early saying, I think this is what we should talk about. And everyone was like, yes, let's do it. And it has been really successful. Yes, yeah. very much so. Yeah, very fantastic so. advice. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things in the entertainment industry is you have to answer the question why. Why you? Mm -hmm. Why now? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we were able to do. Uh, why Why you? It's it's why China Robinson right now with this message and that's what Holland was able to help us really focus and define what that meant and, and figure out what our target audience is mm -hmm. and, and in the media who would be interested in picking up this story because mm -hmm. you can't just splash it out there everywhere. You really have to be strategic and, and that's what we, we jumped into it fast but we didn't do it so fast that we didn't have time to get organized and create a plan for it and I think that's really important. Yes, mm -hmm. well you all have certainly made an impact and it's such an important topic to well, cover. We're, we're hoping too. If we can get picked <laughs> up for screaming we'll make even a bigger yeah. impact. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So what are some advice that you would give to filmmakers looking to get their film out there and even get into the industry? Don't quit. <laughs> this means you've got, if, if this is your passion, you just got to keep plugging ahead and find yeah. people around you that will encourage you and give you advice, good advice. Uh, but the main thing is just don't quit. You just got to keep keep going. And you, you 
run into so many obstacles, so many brick walls, mm -hmm. but you just turn around, smile, and find another opening somewhere and keep on going. Yeah. That is so um, true. For me, definitely, you have to think, like, is this something that I really want to do? Is this something that I really love? Because it's not a glamorous, you know, we're, we're sitting in these nice chairs <laughs> in the studio and we're all, you know, dressed up and, and whatnot, but really the hard work is, you know, tennis shoes and baseball caps and it's lonely and it's, you know, what long are you willing to hours. sacrifice? Yeah. Long hours. Oh my goodness, the long hours. So you have yeah. people that are out there that want to do exactly what you want to do, make film, but they're willing to sacrifice everything for it. They're eating like bologna sandwiches mm. and cereal and ramen every single day so that they can save and make this film. What is it that you're willing to sacrifice? because you have to think about that. If you have a story to tell and it's burning, that's great. Step one, you can write a story, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Educate yourself, how do you write a script? How do you do this process and this process and this process? Educate yourself, so when you do get the opportunity, you'll know what to do with it. I think another thing is, is don't wait till everything's perfectly in place. Oh, yeah. Don't wait until right? you have this big budget <laughs> right. and all the things in place. So <laughs> she, she signed up one of our best cast members the day before we shot, something like that. When she told me that later, I was like, you did what? <laughs> yeah, I never <laughs> told Tracy. Was this was like, <laughs> because the director, you, you, you have to make some decisions and they're all yours. And so I had to wait until I knew that everything was right and ready and there are surprises that are last minute surprises. Mm -hmm. And what Always. do you do? You have to keep trucking. If you really believe in what you're doing, you know, I absolutely believed like it will come together. I'm doing my due diligence and like it'll happen the way that it's supposed to happen. And I absolutely, um, one of our main characters in No Ordinary Love, um, he pulled out like he just, Goodness. he had to pull out for, you know, his own personal reasons. I think on a Tuesday and we were shooting that Sunday. Wow. And so I reached out to everyone and I was just like, I need a guy and he <laughs> has to be good and he has to be, you know, whatever. And we got Eric the day before. Oh my gosh. And he was amazing. He was perfect for the role. And the same thing with um, Deanna who played Tanya in No Ordinary mm -hmm. Love. And she was so good and it was her first feature. Wow. And it Hard was yeah. right <laughs> before we started shooting um, that she sent in a video audition and I was like, <gasps> her you know she's <laughs> it she works and so sometimes things fall into place sometimes they don't most times they don't <laughs> <laughs> that's what true i've noticed with china is that she she trusts her instincts and i think that's really important especially yes. for first time filmmakers you have to trust your instincts and have those instincts that are good you you reach out to the people around you and looking for advice and always ask questions whenever you possibly can but they're at the end of the day there are moments, it's crunch time, and you have to trust your instincts. And even if someone who may know more or think they know more than you do is in the background telling you this advice and that advice, you trust your instincts because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to live with that decision. She's done that many times, and it, it's always paid off. You're so right. Yeah, it, it's important. I yeah. Think. yeah. So what have been some of the biggest surprises in putting together these films? Um, for me, just because I've... I've I haven't done the same thing. So the first one was a historical drama, my first short. And of course, everyone says, do not do a historical piece for your first film. You're crazy. <laughs> and of course, I was like, yeah, but I want to. So <laughs> that's exactly what I did. So that was its own, um, that was my, my first step into film. So there were a lot of surprises, a lot of things that I just, I had no idea um, how to do, what it meant, this and, you know. and some way, you know, somehow it came together. Um, and then No Ordinary Love, hopping into a feature from a short, um, it's not just the budget, but that is a big deal. Like mm -hmm. there's, it's, there's a huge difference there. I'm sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but also the hours and the time. So instead of spending three days, you know, 14 hours, 15 hours, you know, and I wasn't sleeping and you go home and look at dailies and everything else, there were two weeks of no sleeping and eating poorly oh and you know doing all that so um that was definitely like a surprise and a challenge and then doing lola lisa again it was something that we wanted to do um, and we were able to film it right before the world shut down mm -hmm. so we were doing posts after the world shut down um this whole time but we were able to film right before then and that was just something different too it was a thriller i had never done that type of thriller 
So all of these things we were hit with, I mean, weather and time and food and budget and everything. Like everything is, nothing's ever the same. Nothing's ever the same. I think for me, one of the biggest surprises was every, whatever stage we're in, is the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, think, I think filming is the hardest. They're 14 hour days and I'm executive producer, but I was also craft service and right. helping with wardrobe and site <laughs> locations and all of these other things. I think, oh my gosh, this is really hard. It's such long hours and there's always something that comes up in the middle of it. And like one of the scenes we were about to film at this, in a, in a building, we had gone, checked it all out. It was perfect place. Well, all of a sudden we hear all these children somewhere. Oh. We're going, what is that? And there was a daycare on the other side of the oh wall. My gosh. And evidently when we were there checking it out, it was nap time. <laughs> right, so we didn't hear them, but that was a real issue. That was a surprise. I know, but then we were in post, and post was so long. Oh my, I had no idea. You have to do color and sound and all these other pieces that have the to details. come together. And then we do the film festival circuit, and that was really hard to finish. Just I'm like, sure. And now the, the part where we're kind of towards the end of the festival, film festival circuit and, and looking for streaming and distribution, that's a hard it's phase hard. too. So that was the biggest surprise to me. It was like, I can't yeah. think, oh, well, at least we're done with this. Now it, we'll coast a little bit in this phase. No, there's no coasting. It's On the outside, though, your team looks flawless. Oh, Just gosh, let me tell you. Thank you. These, yes. I mean, we have an amazing team, and I'm not saying that about myself. I'm saying, <laughs> we like, work really we well together. <laughs> we really <laughs> have yeah. Tracy and I, yeah, like, our, our story is so funny because who would have ever looked at us and thought like, oh my gosh, they, they work really well together and they're friends, you know? And it was just basically, I needed a house for my first short. And I called her up, a stranger, <laughs> and said, hey, you know, your house looks great on Zillow and I want to use it. And she was <laughs> like, well, sure, okay, bye. <laughs> you know, and we worked out details and there was another funny story in that. but. We just kept up with each other and we have worked really well together. And then Holland came on with us this year and we just really all click. We want mm -hmm. the same thing. We all believe in the project. And I think much that's so. a big part it's of it It's a huge as well. part of it. You have to have that passion has to show. Yeah. 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 And it, it gets you through the, the board. Spots. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say when you asked like about, you know, what it takes and the challenge and, and all of that is the thing that I've been most impressed by with this team is a their commitment to each other and like really supporting each other each step of the way and then also they're probably i've been in this business for nearly 15 years and they are probably one of the most flexible in the in the ability to navigate no's and find the yeses and when you said don't Takes ever patience. give up like, like don't give up and yeah. and i mean we have calls all the time and they're like okay this person's doing it. I, I want us to pitch there. I want us to do this. This isn't working. Let's change course. And so we're constantly having these conversations about not hitting a brick wall, feeling defeated and saying, oh, well, no one's interested, but instead saying, okay, well, if that part didn't work, what will work? And I've seen us, you know, and I know that you guys worked that way before I came mm -hmm. on board. And now, you know, since we've been working, I think that I've seen a lot of projects from entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and in entertainment but I think that that's one of the most dynamic things about what is making this film so successful, both in press interest and festival interest, is the passion not of just the film, but the team who's willing to say yes and make it better and, and not be discouraged or deterred by what should happen. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, this is what I want to do. And it's pretty fierce to see two women like really championing <laughs> right? themselves in this industry and not saying no and not taking no. I think it's been really cool. I think it's one thing that Holland inspiring. has helped us with is the risk taking. So you yes. have to be a risk taker to do yeah. this. You really have to believe in yourself and take those risks. And, and we'll see something in the media or something in the newspapers. I'll go, we want that. We want to go after <laughs> this one. We want this place. We want that piece. Yeah. And Holland goes, well, okay, let's give it a shot. <laughs> and we'll, we will shoot something out there and, you know, we hope something sticks. So but yeah. I think that is an important element too, yeah. especially for first time filmmakers or early filmmakers is you have to be able to take those risks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and be able to fail at some of it. You know, you don't Absolutely. always get what you want every single time, but well, your fine. passion and authenticity is just very inspiring. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. We, we believe in the, in the subject matter for sure. Much so what other advice do you guys have or things you'd like to share? 
I don't don't be afraid of challenges. I think yeah. you you do have to challenge yourself, and we challenge each other. You know, she'll say something because I I sense that she's hesitant to do something. If we were in a crowd at first, she was really shy to go talk to people, and I'd push her. I'd go, okay, you're going to go to that person. You're going to say this and this and this. And she'll go, yeah. no. I go, okay, we're going to go. I'll start it. So it's that being able to push each other and allowing the other one to push you a little yeah. bit. You know, yeah. and feeling comfortable in that, and knowing that I'm not going to ask her to do something. And vice versa, that I don't think she could handle anyway. You know, she's she's confident and passionate about what she. All she has to do is start talking, and then it, everything comes together. But I think that you have to yeah. believe in each other too. As a as a creative, I'm very much, and as a writer especially, I'm very much okay by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I I thrive by myself, <laughs> and so when I'm in crowds and. You know, all of that. I'm probably not the one to start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Tracy definitely will walk up and start I'll a drag conversation. drag her through a crowd. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, come on, China, you know. Um, but at our first festival, um, someone said, you know, if you're not, if you don't outwardly believe in what you're doing, nobody else is going to believe. And I truly sure. believed in what I was doing, mm -hmm. but not outwardly. Mm -hmm. You know, why was I so shy or timid? you know, to go and speak mm -hmm. in front of the crowd about this thing that I believed in. So immediately my mind changed. And that would be a piece of advice. Like, if you don't believe in what you're doing, why are you doing it? Nobody else is going so to So true. Believe. You know, why, why even spend the time that it takes to really, whatever it is, whether it's film, whether it's any kind of art, whether it's anything, you know, the time that you have to put into it, why are you spending that time if you don't really believe in what you're doing, if you don't believe in yourself in what you're doing? So that would be, um, that would be my advice. Like, first and foremost, believe in what you're doing mm -hmm. or I don't do it. Another thing we, you really have to focus on is all the tangible things that you're doing, from the movie poster, the trailer, to the, e the electronic press kit, all those things have to be really sharp, very professional, because yes. your competition out there is. And, you're, and we have been in festivals We've competed with multi-million dollar films mm -hmm. at I an independent it. film festival. We're like, wait, that's an independent film? <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. But we're competing with them toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and we're able to hold our own in that environment, and that's something we're really proud of. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. part of it is because our optics look professional, and that's one thing that Holland's been able to really help us with as well, but you have to do that work. Yeah. You have to Agreed. have someone <laughs> that can help you do the website and help you do the movie poster and make it look sharp, because when you're at a festival, your movie poster's up there with all these other movie posters, and someone may have spent $100,000 just on their movie poster, oh my right? Goodness. So you, you've, got to, you've got to be in the game with it. And so I think we've been able to hold our own. Oh, yeah. I'd say so. The last <laughs> little tip I was going to give is from, you know, the marketing and PR side is to maximize the opportunity. And what I mean by that is you have to do what Tracy said first, which is have it ready so that when the opportunity presents itself, you're ready. But don't be afraid to ask. So for instance, when you know, No Ordinary Love was competing in the American Black Film Festival, we were one of the few films named in Shadow and Act as like a must-see film as part of this wow. giant, massive festival. But I can say that one of the reasons that we were on their radar is that weeks before, we didn't just say, hi, press team of American Black Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Please keep us in mind. No, we had the press kit, we had the press release, we had the headshots, we had everything in a digital press kit. Um, we pre-wrote pitches, we gave them concepts for pitch ideas for inclusion. So we did all, like 90% of the work mm -hmm. and we sent it to their press team, not their executive director of the festival, not some, the right person mm -hmm. who takes care of that portion and said, we wanna be on your radar. We wanna be included. If you have an opportunity for interviews, we're here. China's flexible, she's ready, she can speak about these five topics, um, and, and all of that. Same with Bronze Lens. Their whole press team gave us their entire media list to pitch ourselves. They said, we can't pitch it for you because our job is to pitch the festival, but here's our list. And so oh, we wow. already knew journalists that had, mm -hmm. were rec you know, that had the name recognition of Bron Bronze Lens. They understood it. And then I could say, so-and-so at the festival gave me your contact information, and we'd like for you to consider No Ordinary Love when you're covering the festival. And sure enough, in Atlanta, we got tons of pickups. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we've, wonderful. we've gotten yeah. over, you know, close to 70 press pickups in three months. Wow. In, in, like, impressive. nationally. And, and you so, can't do that without a professional. You really need <laughs> truly, that. I mean, that truly. really does. It opens doors and gets you those places. It does help. And she thinks of things that we would not necessarily think of. We're filmmakers. We don't think of all those things. 
So if, and she's been a, an enormous part of our team. I appreciate it's it. really helpful. But if you couldn't afford it, you could do it yourself. You just need to be really prepared. Yes. Very prepared. And don't take no for an answer. <laughs> yeah. Great advice. Mm -hmm. Well, kudos to each of you. Um, amazing films, and I'm so glad to see it getting all the press coverage and acclaim and just wishing you a great festival at Lone Star. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very Thanks much. for we're having us. Thank you for having of course. Us. We're yes. showing at Coyote Drive-In, and we're excited about doing our drive-in. Wonderful. So, yeah, I love good. it. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.